Hello and welcome back to Open Everyone. Don't forget, we're always inviting you to get social with us on at BronxNet TV. And while you're there, don't forget, tweet me too at Rena Valentin. So from April 20th to the 22nd, uh, Hostel Center for the Arts and Culture presents Tito Puente, a 50-year retrospective of El Rey. Uh, this three-day event will comprise of concerts, discussions, and more, all in memory of the king of Latin music. Joining us now to share more about the three-day event, please welcome Ana Martinez, newly appointed Vice President of Hostel Center, and John McElwee, Director of Hostel Center for the Arts and Culture. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Good morning. Hello. Thank you for having us. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Hailing all the way from Florida? Yes, see, sí. locura. Yes, <laughs> rape straight from Miami into the winter of New York City. Back, back to New York after 30 years living in Miami crazy. Yeah, of course she would refer to it as locura because she, she transitioned in January. She's like, why couldn't it have been May? What was I thinking? <laughs> it's well, like, Pa, been... welcome to New York. <laughs> but it's been great. It's been awesome. It's been an amazing ride. So Congratulations. I'm so happy to be Congratulations back. and welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And uh, I understand you're coming into a nice 50th anniversary celebration. Yes. Of course, yes. this is getting old. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which is perfect. It's in alignment with the Tito Puente 50th year retrospective. Um, so I'm, c I'm coming in in a pivotal time where the college itself is just <coughs> booming into its new 50 years, what the next 50 years are going to be like. And Tito Puente, and when I, I came in, um, I'm the VP of the Institutional Advancement Division at Costos, and um, working with John, and he told me about the Tito Puente weekend, and I'm like, <gasps> Oh my God, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, project, which is uh, funded by the National Endowment of the Arts. And it's just, it's amazing. So I walked into what, you know, Hostos was already putting together. And John, I'm sure you know all the details yeah. of what's going on that weekend, which sounds really promising for all generations. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that because I know you have like family time as well, which I thought was really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it was just uh, the NEA had an application open and uh, gave it some thought. Um, Hostos has a history with Tito Puente. We've got uh, a lot of the memorabilia in our collection. Uh, we have some beautiful displays in the atrium. And um, Joe Conzo, who you know, yeah, runs Joe Conzo Sr., he, <coughs> he does a lot of, uh, he's actually kind of like Tito, right, he's the Tito Puente uh, uh, yes. class mm -hmm. that we've run for the last six years on Latin music, but it's sort of in honor of Tito Puente. So this sort of is the third piece uh, to bring this all together mm -hmm. and to put together a three-day uh, festival and uh, to have panel discussions, to have a film and uh, to have three concerts. One of them is for families on Saturday morning, Friday night on the 21st. Uh, Carlos Enriquez, a product of the Bronx, one of the great m jazz musicians of New York right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a bass player, as you know, and he's one of the great bass players for Wynton Marsalis and mm -hmm. so many more. And he's bringing a, a young group of lions together to perform Tito Puente's jazz, Latin jazz era. And then on the sort of the culminating event is on the 22nd, uh, 7.30, and it's the uh, Mambo Legends, who you probably know, I'm sure. And uh, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, uh, I can hear it I'm in ready to already. dance. <laughs> and Cita Rodriguez is sort of part of that, and uh, so it's going to be fun. Uh, they are doing music that has not been heard in 50 years, and so this, these arrangements are all fresh for this particular performance, a lot of transcription that's going on. So it's really a once in a lifetime opportunity if you like Tito Puente's music. Not only that, I also really appreciate the fact that you're, it, there's an introduction to the next generation, which is why I was referencing the family, because the, the, the next generation doesn't really know who Tito Puente is. And, 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 and this is a three day uh, activity, right? So what, what, ex what happens on Thursday? We have a film, there was a film that was done in 2000. Uh, and that's Tito Puente, the king of Latin music. And uh, it's a really uh, great documentary. It's got lots of cameos and discussions by artists that you recognize, you know, Mark Anthony and uh, so many others uh, that uh, talk about Tito Puente's influence on Latin music and Latin jazz. And uh, it sort of culminates with his performance at the Puerto Rico Symphony, which was a big, exciting thing for him to do. He had never done that before with them. And then he passed, you know, just shortly after, uh -huh. a couple of weeks after that uh, event. So. Uh, Anyway, Hostos actually did the debut of this film uh, in 2000, so it's nice to show it again in 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe Conzo Sr. and uh, Bob Sancho, who you probably know, who is vice president of uh, 
Bronx Lebanon, Lebanon Hospital are in the film, but after the film, they're going to uh, talk about Tito Puente the person. So uh, then it goes on from there. And we have uh, uh, Friday night, we have the concert with uh, Carlos Enriquez. Joe Conzo is doing a warm up lecture before that. And then on Saturday, it's uh, 12 hours of programming. So it okay. starts for a workshop at 10.30 for kids, 11.30 uh, for a family concert. We've got a percussion clinic at 1.30, a panel discussion at 3.30. A percussion We've clinic? Yeah. yeah. Jose Madera. A percussion <laughs> clinic. I like, I like the term. I like the term. Is it, what is that? For like quick fix uh, percussion classes? Well, it's just to learn some rudiments and, and nuances of, of, that, of those particular things. And it's really centered around the conga drums. Uh, the timbales and the bongos. Mm. And uh, John Dandy Rodriguez, who's the uh, bongo player of 35 years with Tito Puente, is probably one of the greatest bongo players on the planet. Mm. And so it's exciting. A lot of people want to come. Jose Madero doesn't do that many workshops, so people really want to hear him. And then Ag Annette Aguilar, who you know, is also going to do some stuff on Congress. Nice. So, yeah. And the panel discussion is on don't, what, don't call it salsa, because you know, uh, Tito Puente was one of uh, the promoters of that salsa, you shouldn't call it salsa. And so that should be interesting. Um, one of our faculty um, actually teaches on uh, Tito Puente. Um, tell me a little bit more about that, because I know that we teach a workshop on that. Yeah, Joe, Conza, Joe Conza runs that class okay. on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to, for this particular weekend, he's doing the sessions at 6 p.m. I'm just, mm. I'm looking at uh, some of the footage. Yeah. Uh, what is this footage from? That's Mario Rivera, and oh. uh, it's, he was uh, one of the great uh, saxophonists. He's no longer living, unfortunately. But this is the band in its heyday, so really fantastic. But um, anyway, we, uh, and then on, uh, uh, we have the 6 o'clock uh, discussion with Joe Conzo, and then the, the uh, performance at 7.30, and then in true Costo style, we're going to have a dance, dance mania, uh, to close the evening out. At 9.30. It's like so. a non-stop party. Right. From <laughs> Saturday night event, you know, just come to Hostos. Yeah. So um, I, you mentioned the NEA, and, and I, I love that you did mm -hmm. because, you know, obviously it's important that we understand the importance of, of, these, found, of these foundations mm -hmm. and, and the services that they provide. And I'm just curious, you know, like what was the criteria that needed to be met and how did it end up being Tito Puente? Well, it was interesting, you know, that we, we've had the Tito Plenty archives for some time, and um, we're looking for to do something like Bon Planasso, which was over uh, multiple days and had performances and films, and we had the audience for that kind of thing. Uh, we had never applied to the Jazz Division of National Endowment for the Arts. So I called there, and the uh, director, Christoph Schutenbach, uh, she said, Carlos Enriquez, I love Carlos Enriquez. He's the future of Latin music, and she was so excited, so she encouraged me to apply. And, um, you know, the Bronx is also a little bit underrepresented uh, in the National Endowment for the Arts, so they look favorably on projects that are going to make an impact in this community. And uh, anyway, very excited. So it's sort of a, a testament. We also get money from the Department of Cultural Affairs, uh, which helps make this possible. But uh, it's really fun, and uh, it's, people are going to be there, you know, for 12 hours on Saturday, and it'll be fun. And uh, it's going to be a great great experience for everyone. Yeah, no, Hostess is, is doing some really great uh, concerts. I, I'm enjoying being a part of them as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> balance between, you know, the Mambo legend, so the past and the present with Carlos Enriquez. I think, again, it's talking about what you just mentioned, is taking it to the future and teaching young kids about the future of this wonderful legend and his music. Well, we have a lot of great musicians here in the Bronx, and yeah, um, and then there's this whole movement of fusion, and and it's important to know mm -hmm. the, the origins of of this fusion music, right? As you're saying, don't call it salsa, right? Mm -hmm. Which originates from mambo, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of this originates from the folkloric music. So there's and then that's one of the things I really love about hostess is like we, we're keeping that that knowledge in in the next generation's faces, alive. yes, yeah. alive, and we're educating them, and we're mm -hmm. making sure that the the history behind it, it is also uh, retained as well. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so welcome, Anna. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> this sounds like it's going to be a party, so. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to dance. Uh, I'm actually, um, I haven't yet sat in our theaters to listen to a concert, and we have two amazing theaters, and I am personally looking forward to being on those seats and just listening to this wonderful music. Um, I, I am beyond impressed at the theaters and that we have and the quality uh, of the presentations we, we afford the community. So I'm personally excited because uh, I love Tito Puente. I actually met him once and um, it, 
he's just a remarkable remarkable artist love it love the enthusiasm mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you for being here with us sharing it with our viewers mm -hmm. and once again the tito puente a 50-year retrospective of el rey <coughs> excuse me will take be taking place from april 20th through the 22nd all happening at the Hosto Center for the Arts and Culture, located on 450 Grand Concourse in the Bronx. And for a full list of all the events we just mentioned, please visit hostos.cuny.edu slash culture arts.